going on everybody welcome to and welcome back to another photoshop retouching tutorial i am celebrity and fashion photographer chris cavanaugh and in today's video i'm going to be showing you how to rejudge male skin using frequency separation i want to be able to show you how to get a better skin tone along with texture and then also learning how to diminish but not remove certain features and characteristics of the male skin so we're going to jump right into the video let's get into it so the first thing that happens when I go into retouching is being able to analyze what needs to be done. I zoom into the image and I can see that around his eyes he have discoloration. So I would like to correct that along with being able to remove different imperfections, whether it's smile lines or, you know, blemishes, moles, pimples, whatever it may be. Gratefully, he has really great skin, so uh, I don't have to do that much, but I still want to be able to correct things to have it look more polished than what it is using frequency separation. I'm going to be able to connect the beard, have that fill in a little bit more, along with just generally bringing detail back into the image. So let's get into it. The first thing I like to do is go into the Spot Heal tool. I love to zoom into the image to be able to get a better perspective of what I'm doing and anything that stands out, whether it's blemishes or, you know, anything like that, I want to, you know, uh, kind of, you know, clean up. So I like to work my way from the top, going all the way down to the bottom to keep a, you know, more consistent workflow. Anything that I see that is not what I want it to be, I'll remove. And then what I'll do is I'll go into the aspect of you know, just working my way down, seeing things that I can fix and that I don't want there. If it's any facial characteristics that are, you know, kind of like very popular to this person's face, whether it's a celebrity client or it's just, you know, even a, a regular client, I like to kind of keep that because it's something that is going to always be there. It's not like a, a, ble a blemish or anything like that. Say it's a mole that's, you know, very uh, kind of like noticeable. I like to keep that characteristics to their face but if it's anything you know like a uh, kind of like blemish or freckle at most I will try to kind of like keep that same uh, you know vibe there but at the same time just remove it so that it's not as noticeable in the final result and it's many ways to do this it's through clone stamp it's through the patch tool it's through you know the spot heal tool but I just like to work you know, and it's different ways and methods to get it, but as long as the job is done, why not? All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to just clean up this beard area by using a clone stamp and just start stacking here from an, another area and kind of just building that up a little bit and just repeating that cycle. I'm going to zoom out just to see where we are so far. Here's a quick before and after. And then I'm going to zoom in back to the photo. And I am going to start working on uh, the discoloration in the skin using a frequency separate, sorry, a dodge and burn. It's multiple ways to do this. You can use the dodge and burn tactic. You can use a clone stamp tool by going up here to the modes and clicking the lighten or you can go in here and turn the image black and white, pull the red all the way down so that it personifies everything that is dark and everything that is light, everything that needs to be, uh, you know, perfected, you'll be able to see more uh, prevalent. So I'm going to delete that and merge those together and go right back into my task. I'm using a Wacom pen tablet, so it allows me to, uh, you know, have control over the pressure sensitivity when it comes to retouching this so I can just you know do more heavily handed heavy handed in one area than the next but whatever works to my benefit and makes the bigger and best difference is what I will continue with and just going to keep repeating that I want to know in the comment section, so what are some of your methods you use at this very moment to be able to retouch skin? What's some things that you can do better in? What's some things that you feel that is your strong suits in retouching? I would like to know. Leave them in the comments. 
I'm going to zoom out for a quick second just to see where I am so far. And here's a quick before and after so far with where we are. All right, I'm going to use the patch tool to just come around this area right here and remove that. And I'm just going to start moving around in other areas as well that I like to kind of clean up. If it's too much, I can go back. Alrighty. So the next thing I'm going to do is, you know, go in here and just zoom back out to the, well, zoom back into the image, see where we are so far. I know I would like to clean up the eyebrows a little bit. So I'll select a lighter frequency of opacity and I'm going to just start selecting around the eye and brushing just to start cleaning those areas up just a tad. And you can always just change the opacity based off the strength or how visible you want, you know, that uh, task to be removed. But my whole thing is always just diminishing, never removing fully. That it's just diminished. It was a little bit too strong on that end. So I'm going to back off and go right back into that and just, you know, clean it up a little bit better. All right. Also within that, I would like to bring more detail back into the eyes so that it's not too dark. I want to bring that detail back into the eyelashes. So I'm going to use a dodge and burn to just, you know, start cleaning that up a little bit, bringing that detail back and just start going with the light screw up around the eyes. Perfect. I can't stress how important it is to uh, zoom in and out of the image while you're going about your retouching process because you're always going to see something that you feel can perfect the image to be a little bit more better than what it was. Rather, it's just diminishing, you know, certain things or personifying certain things. It all comes down to artistic and creative expression. Alrighty. So I'm going to zoom out again, go to a quick before, a quick after. I would like to clean up the beard a little more. So I'm going to go in with a clone stamp and get a quick selection around the face. And I'm going to just start doing a light scrub around his beard to diminish. Go over to the other side and repeat the process. Alrighty. So my next process is I'm going to go over here to the filters, head over to liquify, and I just want to kind of correct his hairline a little bit. Bring a little bit more into it, make a little bit more straight, along with shape. Not doing too much that it's extremely noticeable, but just fine tuning. And we're done. Okay, so my next process is going in and using a frequency separation with this panel called Retouching Essentials Pack. I'm going to go in with a, mm, I'll say I'll go in with a 12. Gaussian blur radius. I'll let that then render. 
head back in and go into the mix brush tool and start running across areas that I like to clean up and polish. Now using a a retouching uh, pen tool you have the advantage to be able to again go in with pressure sensitivity and clean up places. A lot of the times with mouse or if you're using a trackpad you don't have that luxury. So that's something you can always take advantage of. You can get the smallest walking tablet or you can order one off Amazon you know that uh, may be to your budget and benefit. I try to always maneuver in the same direction that I'm going along retouching to always have it more cohesive. Doing it to the point where it looks natural, but at the same same time, it's not overdone. But as you can see, it's probably, you know, you can see the changes that are occurring in this uh, frequency separation task and see how we went from this right here to this and we still have the skin texture we still have you know tonality we still have you know uh, texture but at the same time it is more polished than what it was when we first started the task my next thing I'm going to do is head over to the same retouching essentials pack package and I'm going to go into skin smoothening I'm going to render click that and let it render and then I'm going to just perform the same task as the last with the mix brush tool going over it with a light scrub just to you know smooth that skin out just a little bit with the frequency separation and it's many ways and methods to do this. You know, this is more of a quicker method when you are just wanting to get the content out, but at the same time have a very clean aesthetic to it. It's methods like dodge and burn, which is more so kind of quote unquote industry standard to, for let, to let other photographers tell. But whatever fits your aesthetic, whatever fits your retouching style and works for you, it's no right way or wrong way and it's no rules to it. But at the end of the day, you always just want to make sure you're getting a very clean image. And this is where we are so far. So we brought back texture. We removed in well, we diminished tonality, black circles around the eyes or even, you know, skin imperfections. We also, along with doing that smooth, the skin brought skin texture to be more even and cohesive throughout the face. But at the same time, when we zoom in, we still have that detail that we first had and we didn't lose but we just diminished see how cool that is now another thing I would like to do I always say along with dodging and burning different areas of the skin you always want to make sure you're able to bring back detail on certain areas like the hair or whether it's an eyebrow or an eyelash that, you know, kind of uh, lost that along the shooting process. So I'll go in a lot with dodge and burn. And to get detail back in certain areas, I'll dodge. And to remove details from some areas, Gonna go in with the dodge tool. Just bring those details back. Let's see how we're bringing that right back into it. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do before ending off this video is zoom out just a little bit more. And I feel that crop factor can make or break the viewpoint of an image so I am going to crop this to be more cohesive and precise within the image 
make sure I line it up precisely and remove all that blank space that we once had. I'm not pleased with this uh, particular crop, so I'm going to go right back. And I try to line the face up in certain areas with these lines. Let's see. I'm pleased with that. That looks absolutely amazing. All right. In my last task, to end this off, I'm going to go right back into the Retouching Essentials pack, which is a frequency separation uh, pack. And I am going to then head over to the Even Skin task. And I'm going to just repeat that process of the mix brush. And I'm just going to start rubbing over places very lightly. to just bring it all together. Okay, so I'm gonna go into the adjustments layer, put a little bit of contrast in there, maybe a little brightness, maybe not. And this is how we went from this to this i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for uh viewing another video i can't wait to get the next ones out to you if you want to see more content like this head over to my patreon page that's patreon.com slash chris photo studios photo f-o-t-o studios and you can catch more content from retouching from behind the scenes access from when i'm on set I'm giving you lighting diagrams. I'm giving you the breakdown of the equipment I'm using, how I achieve the look, along with exclusive exclusive access to other things like, uh, you know, different Photoshop software, free retouching LUTs. So I'll catch you guys back in the video. I appreciate you and I'll see you later. We're out.